is going on guys? JD from New York here. Thank you so much for once again tuning into the channel on another Monday night. Raw tonight, March 6th, 2017, Chicago, Illinois. And we got a lot of building blocks and the foundation was laid for Monday Night Raw as we head into Orlando for WrestleMania 33. I do not, and I want to reiterate this again because it's going to give me a fucking ulcer again. I do not... Want to mention anything Fastlane. Fastlane was on Sunday night. It is behind us. It gave us fucking nightmares as we went to sleep last night. I do not want to mention anything from that show because it was fucking horrible. If you guys want my thoughts on that, it's live on the channel right now. You can go to the annotation that you see in this video. Drop down and it'll take you right to the video. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not mentioning anything else about Fastlane. Okay, and Monday Night Raw really didn't mention anything about Fastlane either. Not so much, because it was that fucking terrible of a pay-per-view. Goldberg won, Roman Reigns won, and that was about it. Everything else from that pay-per-view, it was pretty much, okay, we had it, we want you to forget it because it was fucking terrible, let's move on. We got four weeks left of WrestleMania, let's worry about tonight, okay? But, uh, about Fastlane, the only thing I do want to mention is the support that you guys have given me, man. It's unbelievable that uh, you guys have come out and supported me as much as you have. It's very, very uh, awesome to see. And uh, the review did uh, very well. Uh, over 2,400 likes, close to 50,000 views. You guys are fucking kicking ass as always. The entire weekend, the entire Fastlane coverage this weekend was fucking awesome. Off the script, the match simulations, the late breaking news and rumors that I posted last night about 5 p.m. You, you guys are awesome. Everything I upload, you're right there waiting for me to give my opinion, and I, I greatly appreciate everything you guys do for me, man, so thank you, and thank you to all the new subs, man, that, you know, found me through the Fastlane review, and have deemed me worthy of a subscription, I greatly appreciate it, and I hope you guys enjoy your stay, if you are new to the channel, we do, uh, off the script, my podcast, every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, covering WWE extensively, we do Raw reviews, SmackDown reviews, NXT reviews, you name it, it's covered here, we do extra videos, if the, you know, the, the news topic is, uh, is big enough, we do match simulations, we do WW2K17 coverage, and if you enjoy all that type of shit, and I do video game shit as well, man, I'm doing Resident Evil right now, I'm going to be doing uh, The Legend of Zelda on Twitch very, very soon, so if you guys enjoy all that type of shit, thank you for the subscribe, and follow me on Twitter, man, it's the best way to keep up to, the, uh, you know, up to date on the channel, at JD from NY206, and I want to give a shout out to Audible, as always, they are sponsoring this Monday Night Raw review again this week, Audible is giving everybody listening tonight 30 days to try the service out. And that includes one free audio book, man. Anything that you want, it is free on us. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. Over 180,000 books to choose from. A lot of those are wrestling related, man. No matter what genre that you want to listen to, no matter what genre you are interested in. It is there on Audible. So that's audibletrial.com slash off the script. Go through the sign-up process free for 30 days. That includes one free audio book with iPhone and Android. And no matter what you guys do, if you guys cancel before the 30 days, you get to keep your audio book, man. Once again, that's audibletrial.com slash off the script. And if you guys do sign up, tweet me, and I will automatically retweet you guys. Show me what you're listening to for the free subscription of Audible Trial. Now that we got that out of the way, Chicago, I want to thank each and every one of you for making this a raucous crowd. Unlike fucking Green Bay, people actually legit purchased their tickets to watch what they fucking paid for. Good job, Chicago. I love you. And I got to visit the city so, uh, sometime soon, you know. Uh, Chicago's very uh, rowdy. Uh, I would like a, uh, a deep dish pizza because I never had one authentic. So I got I to gotta make my way to Chicago one of these years, man. But thank you for making it a loud show and voicing your opinion and your disgust with several entities on this show. Much appreciated. But we started the show off tonight right away. It wasn't Goldberg, it wasn't Lesnar, it wasn't Reigns, it wasn't Strowman. Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho made his return to Monday Night Raw. He came out and clearly Chris Jericho now as to what happened with the Festival of Friendship and his uh, friendship with Kevin Owens now pretty much a done deal. And that is all ruined. Jericho is now a babyface going forward. He said tonight is the resurrection of Jericho. He said last night he screwed Kevin Owens out of the Universal Championship. He congratulated Goldberg as a, 
uh, as a quick side note, he said Owens had it coming because Owens stabbed him in the back at the Festival of Friendship and he twisted the knife that he stabbed right in Jericho's back, man. He twisted it. So uh, that friendship is over with. He said he ripped his heart out. He also said that he is angry, hurt, confused, and he wants to know why Kevin Owens did what he did. After Jericho asked all these questions, why? Why did he do this to me? Oh, why? Why did we get a shitty fast lane? Why is Kevin Dunn's teeth so big? Why is Roman Reigns so garbage? Why is Vince McMahon so senile? Why is Stephanie McMahon so cringe? Why is Jack Swagger a fucking master chef? Why is Titus O'Neil still on my TV? Why does Dana Brooke botch everywhere? Why does Charlotte sound like a robot? Why does fucking Sasha Banks and Bayley fucking sound so goddamn scripted on television? There's a lot of whys when it comes to this show. If you get my drift. Is that enough for you? Should I add more? I think we'll leave it at that. You guys get the fucking point. Anyway, Jericho wants to know why. I got a lot of fucking questions too. And you just got a taste of them. But Owens comes out. Owens comes I'm fucking exhausted, man. You see my eyes? I am exhausted, man. I got four hours of fucking sleep. So if I don't come up with any quick-witted jokes like I usually do on Monday nights, it's because my brain ain't functioning, bro. I'm running up four hours of sleep. All day yesterday I worked, slept four hours, got up for work, had to be up at 7.30, fucking peeled my way out of bed, had to be at work till 6 o'clock, I watched this fucking show, I recorded a video, and now here I am doing this video. I am exhausted, bro. So I hope you guys appreciate it. Owens comes out, asked if he honestly expects an explanation from him after what he did to him last night. Jericho fucked uh, Owens out of the Universal Championship, so according to Owens, Jericho doesn't deserve an explanation. Jericho, with increasing volume, yelling at the top of his lungs, Owens told, or told Owens, over and over and over to be quiet. He just raised his voice, raised his voice, raised his voice, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. He stopped short, and I wish he would have went through with it. He, he was going to call Owens a son of a bitch, but being that this is PG initiative on Monday Night Raw, and that the little kitties and the families are in the audience, he stopped short saying, you son of a... Son of a what? Huh? You can't go through with it? This is WrestleMania season. What happened to pushing the envelope, WWE? Son of a bitch. It's okay. It's not a derogatory term. It's not something that's going to fucking give you kids nightmares at the end of the night. Give me a break. This is WrestleMania season. I want intensity. I want flair. I want fire. Okay? I want a reason to fucking care when we go into Orlando on April 2nd. Give these guys a little bit of a fucking leeway. You know, cut the leash a little bit. That's all I ask. So he was short, or stopped short of calling Owens a son of a bitch. He asked why he betrayed him. Owens said, and this was the truth, Owens did give him an explanation, said that he was never actually Jericho's best friend. So he didn't actually stab his best friend in the back like Jericho thinks. The Chicago crowd, uh, you know, was uh, pretty much pro-Jericho here, and they were booing Kevin Owens, which is okay. I, I, I like this Kevin Owens. This is the Kevin Owens that we didn't see for seven months. Jericho looked very um, flustered, I would say. He said Sami Zayn actually was his best friend, said Owens. And he stabbed Zayn in the back, and he would do it over and over and over again. That's fine. I'm okay with that KO. That's the KO I want to see. Ruthless. Doesn't give a shit about anybody else. Just like Bobby the Brain Heenan said in the 1992 Royal Rumble. I'd do that to my grandmother if I had to. Exactly. That's what you got to do. That's what I want to see out of Kevin Owens. So, Jericho was pretty much used as a tool, said Owens. He used him because the night he became Universal Champion... Triple H uttered to him that everyone is now coming for the title, so he should do whatever it takes to keep the title. He decided to uh, get somebody to watch his back, is what Owen said. He needed that person to know ex exactly what was going on. He needed that person to know the position that Owens was in, and he he needed someone to to you know be a veteran and knew what the fuck was going on as far as being a world champion goes. Uh, but more importantly, I needed that person to be gullible, said Owens. And Chris, if it makes you feel any better, you were the perfect tool. So, uh, 
Owens. Owens. Jesus Christ, like a fucking uh, shitty relationship, man. Used the girlfriend or used the boyfriend for everything under the sun and fucked him in the end. So, uh, Owens, using Jericho for his own good, and that was the only reason that he gave. So, Jericho is gullible. And Chris, if it makes you feel any better, you were the perfect tool, you outlived your usefulness, and it happened the second you accepted the match against Goldberg on my behalf. The second you went from a tool to a burden, I knew you had to go. That's why I did it, Chris. Are you happy now? Are you happy with the answer? Is that the answer you're looking for? You got your answer tonight. Goldberg chants started to ring out. Owen says he could talk about Goldberg too, but he said he should have beaten him, and he would have beaten him because he would have outsmarted him if it not for Jericho. He said he is man enough to admit that Jericho outsmarted him last night. He said that the fe Festival of Friendship, he spared him because he could make sure he'd never walk again, but he let him walk away for your family, because I'm a good person. He said, letting Jericho walk away that night was the biggest mistake of his career, and he'll never make that type of mistake again. He said the biggest mistake in Jericho's career was costing him the title at Fastlane. So Jericho said the biggest mistake that he ever made was trusting Kevin Owens. He said eight or ten years ago, he would have done the same thing to him. But now, he would have done it first, quicker, and better. He said that he was complacent and liked the idea of having a best friend. He said no longer that he needed a best friend anymore because he has thousands of friends in the arena tonight. So that was the end of them going back and forth. And Jericho pretty much said, you know what? This is not the end. This is the road filled with twists and turns. And this is only the beginning. And the beginning of Jericho and Owens starts at WrestleMania. So Jericho challenged Kevin Owens to a match at WrestleMania. Kevin Owens said, listen, listen, I'll challenge you at WrestleMania if you put your United States Championship on the line. So we got a done deal. Our first segment of the night, our first match for WrestleMania, confirmed outside of Lesnar and Goldberg. Kevin Owens will challenge Chris Jericho for the United States Championship. Now, the only thing I will say here about this is two things. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed the intensity of Kevin Owens, I enjoyed the attitude and the, I would say, the sadness that was Jericho that turned into, you know what, he feels bad, but he wants to get revenge on Kevin Owens. It went through a multitude of emotions there. I really enjoyed that. I really appreciated that. Owens was very direct. Owens was very nasty. Owens was very uh, cold. That's what I want to see out of Kevin Owens. Now, normally... I would be bitching and complaining that Kevin Owens was the Universal Champion and he lost the championship and now he's challenging for the United States Championship. On a normal day, on a normal day, I would be upset with that. I'm not going to be upset with that this year. Do you want to know why? Because there's honestly no difference between the Universal Championship and the United States Championship on Monday Night Raw at this stage of the game. They both are equal to one another. The Universal Championship is not greater than the United States Championship and vice versa. They are the same thing. They are both fucking meaningless. Kevin Owens did nothing with the Universal Championship. The Universal Championship didn't make Owens look good at all. The only thing that we could look back on Kevin Owens and say is that he was the longest reigning Universal Champion. But as far as challenging for the United States Championship, he might get more notoriety now if he beats Jericho for the United States Championship because he is back to his former self. And that's what we all want to see. If Owens was back to his former self, if Owens was acting the way he is now with the Universal Championship, we might be looking at a different fucking Kevin Owens title reign. But the fact that he was treated like a fucking joke and it was nothing but a circus for seven months, nobody gave a shit. He was a fucking coward champion and the Universal title meant nothing around Kevin Owens' shoulder. Nothing. So the fact that he's challenging for the United States Championship makes no difference. They are one in the same. The Universal Championship is no greater than the United States Championship. I want you guys to understand that. So the title match is set for WrestleMania. It's going to be Owens, Jericho, United States Championship. Everything worked. It was perfect. The explanation was perfect. There's really no other explanation for why Kevin Owens did what he did. And they didn't mention anything about Triple H outside the fact that Triple H told Kevin Owens, listen, you know, you, you, I gifted you the Universal Championship. Now, you have to do whatever it takes to keep that championship. 
and they went over that. The only thing that they did not mention is the last time that we seen, right before the Festival of Friendship, why Triple H pulled Kevin Owens to the side. That's the only thing we still don't know what he said. We don't, we, we don't know if we're ever going to get an explanation for that, but that was not mentioned. There was no mention of a proposed stable. There's no, there's no uh, you know, bullshit going on with Joe and Owens and no explanation as to why they're working for Triple H or if they're working for Triple H, but the match was set, okay? So after all of this, after the match was set, we had a scuffle in the ring with Sami Zayn and Samoa Joe, Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho got involved. We had Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho battle in the ring. Samoa Joe came down to help Kevin Owens, so the unity is there. Again, they're teasing the alliance between Joe and Owens. Out comes Sami Zayn with a steel chair. He tries to chase off Owens and Joe. Uh, he gets beaten down. And then Jericho grabs the steel chair and, in the end, nails Joe, nails Owens. Both of them are laying on the outside of the ring. Jericho and Zayn stand tall in the middle of the ring to open Monday Night Raw. I really enjoyed that. There was nothing wrong with this at all. It was very basic and everything just worked for me just fine. I thought we were going to get a tag team match out of it, which I would have rather preferred. But we got two singles matches. We got Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens to start Raw after this segment. And then we got... Jericho and Samoa Joe towards the end of the show. Now, the Zayn Owens match barely went five minutes. And again, for the second night in a row, Sami Zayn got destroyed. I don't know what's going on with Sami Zayn. Two matches in 24 hours, two completely lopsided losses for Sami Zayn. Uh, I really don't understand what they're doing with him. At this point, I'm very fearful for what this means for Sami Zayn going into WrestleMania. He, he, he feels like he has no direction right now going into WrestleMania. I'm hoping the fact that we did not see Finn Balor tonight, okay, I'm going to get that out there. I thought Balor was going to, you know, re-debut or return on Monday Night Raw. We did not get any Finn Balor. Uh, Dave Meltzer was reporting that Balor will be on this edition of Monday Night Raw. We did not get any Finn Balor. So it looks like we might be getting Zayn versus Joe again at WrestleMania. Now, I'm, I'm not going to hold my breath, breath on that one, but I don't see anything for Sami Zayn to do at WrestleMania. If he doesn't have Joe, he's probably going to be mixed in and get lost in the shuffle in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And Sami Zayn, to me, deserves a lot better for WrestleMania, being that uh, in 2016, the guy uh, had uh, it, you know three top three level matches for 2016 in WWE. Guy's got to be rewarded. You don't, re you don't reward Sami Zayn by putting him in a fucking Battle Royal at WrestleMania. I'm sorry. But we'll see. We don't know what Sami Zayn is going to be doing at WrestleMania, but he had a rough 24 hours, man. Two completely lopsided losses. Kevin Owens just destroyed him here. Uh, you know, he, he gave him the pop-up powerbomb. He, he caught Sami Zayn with the pop-up powerbomb, and it, that was it, you know? He, he had a couple of pop-up powerbombs. He had teed him with two pop-up powerbombs. He was just destroyed. He was destroyed by Joe last night, really in no contest. And, and tonight, Owens just came out, you know, attitude, you know, Beasting all over Sami Zayn. That was it. Nothing to it. Sami Zayn didn't even put up a fight. Owens beats Zayn in the opening match. Uh, we moved on here to probably the best match of the night. And Neville versus Rich Swan for the Cruiserweight Championship. This match went about 14 minutes. This was the longest Cruiserweight Championship match on Monday Night Raw since they debuted on this brand. Now, I don't know what's going on with the Cruiserweights. This is two matches in a row that really got spotlighted with a lot of time. This is two matches that were really, you know, highlighted by, uh, you know, Neville and Swan and Gallagher, respectively, where they did not feel like they were being chained down and being held down wrestling that typical WWE style. These guys legit went out there and just did what they had to do, man. Rich Swan. You know, he was beat up in this match just like Gallagher was last night. Neville is fucking beast. There was a, there was a portion of this match where Rich Swan was being beaten down on the outside. Neville brutally just threw him into the LED board that's on the apron of the ring, head first like a fucking spear. Rich Swan himself was taking some big risks. He went for a huge Phoenix splash. He did a unbelievable fucking... Uh, I don't know what it was. It was like a Phoenix Splash mixed with a fucking senton off the top rope to the outside that he nailed on, on Neville. Um, but Rich Swan and Neville, man, they really put on a clinic here. 
Uh, it wasn't better than what Gallagher and Neville did last night, but it was pretty damn close. This was probably the best Cruiserweight match that we've seen on Monday Night Raw since these guys debuted on Monday Night Raw. And Neville is a fucking monster. Rich Swan held, you know, held his own as well, but I don't know what's going on with the Cruiserweights. If WWE is, you know, uh, you know, loosening the leash a little bit, but these guys looked completely different last night and then going into tonight. Now, I don't know if, if it's like I said, WWE's loosening the leash or if Neville is really that good. I, I'm going to I'm gonna say that Neville is really that damn good. But I'm hoping it's the first thing that I mentioned. I hope WWE is realizing that they, they got to let these guys go. They got to let these guys do what they got to do as cruiserweights to get the crowd into it. And the Chicago crowd, just like the Milwaukee crowd last night with Neville and Gallagher, they were into the, they were into the match. It was fucking great. And this is what I want to see every fucking week out of the Cruiserweights. We need to see something like this with 15 minutes dedicated to this. I'm okay with the commercials as long as they're getting time and as long as these guys are going out there and giving me the action that we expect from the Cruiserweights. Neville wins and the end of this match seen a very believable near fall for, uh, for uh, Rich Swan. He goes up for a Phoenix Splash. He misses the Phoenix Splash. And quickly, Neville, right on top of his game, he sees the downed Rich Swan missing the Phoenix Splash. He turns it into the Ring of Saturn. And that was it. Submission, Rich Swan taps. Neville retains the Cruiserweight Championship. Really, really good match. The best Cruiserweight match that we've seen on television for Raw since they debuted in the division. After the match, this is where things got interesting. After the match, Austin Aries was in the ring. And the crowd started going crazy with Austin Aries chants. Now, this is a smart crowd. If this was Green Bay last week, I don't think this segment would have came off anywhere near the way it was tonight. Crowd started to chant Austin Aries. He thanked Chicago. And he wanted to know what Neville's thoughts were on the last 24 hours. He had two great matches. He's the king of the cruiserweights. He's, he's in a division where seemingly nobody can stop him. And what's next? You know, there's no competition. And Neville says, listen, there's... Nobody that anybody can think of right now that can even come close to what I'm doing here. So, as soon as Neville said that, that was instigation on Neville's behalf. And the crowd, again, started to chant Austin Aries. And Austin Aries is like, well, I think the Chicago crowd's got uh, someone in mind that they're letting you know of, Neville. And Neville was like, listen, go back to your announce table. Make you cheap little jokes and entertain the WWE Universe on commentary. He said, this is his ring. I suggest you get out before I re-break your orbital socket. Austin Aries removes his sunglasses. He looks great. He can't even tell what, what, what happened with the injury prior to that. Aries removed his sunglasses, showed the results of his damaged or orbital socket. He looked fantastic, like I said. Aries says that he's just doing his job. Neville kept spraying and spitting fucking you know, saliva all over Austin Aries' face. He kept wiping his face. And then Aries says, he just wants to ask him one more question. You know, better yet, Neville, I, ha I have a recommendation for you. And he nails him with the fucking microphone. He comes off the ropes, nails him with a flying forearm. Everybody's going crazy. We are looking at Austin Aries versus Neville, possibly. Not yet confirmed, though. Looks like they're heading, at, heading in that direction. It looks like we're going to get Austin Aries versus Neville for the Cruiserweight Championship at WrestleMania. And I will be the first to tell you that... I have always thought Austin Aries was a better heel than he was babyface. The Chicago crowd really got behind Austin Aries. I really enjoyed this segment. Austin Aries, I'm happy that he's back. Uh, he's really over with the WWE main roster crowd. I think he's got a great voice. He's got a great presence, and he's even better in the ring. I would be the first to tell you I was not too keen on this match when it was being rumored a couple of weeks ago. After tonight's segment, I think I'm going to be interested in this match, and they really caught my eye with this. This was a great segment, and this is exactly what the Cruiserweight division needs. It needs Austin Aries. It needs guys like Neville. These guys could be the catalyst to get the Cruiserweights out of the funk that they're in, but the last 48 hours for the Cruiserweights have been great. I'm just hoping that WWE can continue this moving on week after week after week as we go into WrestleMania, because all I want is what we've seen in the last 48 hours, and I want intensity, I want flair, I want fire, and I want this to mean something. I want Austin Aries returning to mean something. I want to have him put up a challenge to Neville, and I want them to go out there and steal the show at WrestleMania. That's all I want. I know they're capable of it. 
Hopefully, WWE believes in them and gives them the time to do so at WrestleMania. Enzo and Big Cass were backstage. There was a scuffle between Enzo and Cass and Cesaro and Sheamus. Apparently, uh, everybody is deciding on what's going to happen with the Tag Team Championships at WrestleMania. So, Mick Foley makes a match. Enzo and Cass versus Sheamus and Cesaro. The winner of that goes on to fight Gallows and Anderson at WrestleMania for the Tag Team Championships. So that is set in stone right now. We're going to get the Tag Team Championships and that situation settled for WrestleMania 33 as well. As you see, WWE coming out in the first hour, setting the stage for WrestleMania. You got to appreciate that. Hour two here. Goldberg comes out. And I knew the Chicago crowd. Now listen, if this was Green Bay, they would have fucking chanted Goldberg all night. Or they would have just sat on their fucking hands and said nothing all night because that's what Green Bay does. But um, if this was any other crowd, Tennessee, Arkansas, one of these fucking boring cities, they would have chanted Goldberg and they would have been all over the fucking WWE Kool-Aid from Fastlane, okay? Chicago, on the other hand, Goldberg comes out and he's mixed, you know, with booze and cheers. All of a sudden, Goldberg's music hits and you hear the moaning and groaning from the Chicago crowd. I loved it because they're upset that their man, Kevin Owens, did not get to shine as a heel on the main roster with the Universal Championship in this title reign. You know, he was nothing but a joke. And the Chicago crowd knows that Goldberg's a part-timer, that Goldberg is, you know, going to be here for WrestleMania, and then he's going to say goodbye until his next big money match. He's not going to be here after WrestleMania. He, he's just a, a flash in the pen, one-time, you know, champion that they gave the belt to simply to drop it to Brock Lesnar. The Chicago crowd is not stupid. They understood that. They did not like the way Kevin Owens was treated, and they, they, they sounded off when Goldberg's music hit. It was mixed with, you know, booze and cheers. And then all of a sudden, Goldberg gets the microphone, and he's showered with CM Punk chants. You know, he starts laughing at the crowd. He's like, oh, I expected that. So Goldberg is standing out there, you know, dumbfounded by the Chicago crowd, chanting CM Punk to him, out comes Paul Heyman. I I don't know if WWE called an audible on this. I don't know if WWE really said, you know what, let's save him from, you know, drowning out there with the CM Punk chance and they sent a Heyman out early. I, I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow or on Wednesday when news breaks of, you know, news and rumors coming out of Chicago and Monday Night Raw. But it looked like Paul Heyman was sent out there rather quickly to save Goldberg from the CM Punk chance. That's just my uh, interpretation of that. But Paul Heyman comes out. And pretty much said, the fans should not confuse him with someone who is man enough to go into the ring and even attempt a handshake with the new Universal Champion. He said his hand is the hand that should be shaking Mr. Goldberg's. He said that he didn't come to Raw alone, so Lesnar was in the building. And he said that he is the advocate for the challenger on April 2nd. Out came Brock Lesnar to a huge ovation. And... He wore a new Suplex City, Chicago, Illinois shirt. Lesnar circled the ring. He got into the ring, and they stared each other down, okay? Both men were not intimidated by one another. Lesnar stared at the title. Lesnar laughed at the title. He laughed at Goldberg. Goldberg did not flinch whatsoever. Now, Heyman introduced them to each other. He said Lesnar came out to shake his hand and congratulate him. That's all he was there for. He said his client understands how happy he must be. Uh, you know, uh, well, how happy he must be having devastated and demolished Owens last night. He said the only person happier is his client. He said Goldberg has proven to be every bit the beast that Brock has proven to be and every bit the conqueror. He said each of them will enter the ring at WrestleMania 33, but only one walks out as the winner. He said the other will walk out the loser. So that was pretty much it. Heyman said he doesn't deal in predictions he deals in spoilers. This is the kicker. I love this fucking line. And this, this is what makes Paul Heyman so fucking great. He said at the end of the match, there will be a new reigning defending undisputed universal champion. Goldberg stared down and twitched at Lesnar. The crowd talked along with Heyman and he said Lesnar's name. He said at the end of the match, they will all look at Goldberg and say, there he is, Brock's bitch. So, uh... Lesnar offered a handshake, and then before you know it, F5 to Goldberg. He didn't even let go of the fucking title when he was in the F5 position. F5 to Goldberg, and he just laid him out in the middle of the ring. 
Goldberg, now I joked around on Twitter, after that F5, he might be out six to eight months. We don't know. You know, Goldberg is fragile. He hasn't taken a bump yet since he's been back in the WWE. Quite frankly, he doesn't need to. You know, but this is why people are bitching. But you got to be careful with Goldberg. I'm afraid that he's fragile goods. So if you want to give him an F5 or a fucking suplex here or there before WrestleMania, you got to watch out. This guy doesn't land on the disabled list with Seth Rollins. But this was a pretty decent segment. Um, I'm not all that hyped for the match. I'm at this stage of the game right now where I just want to see Lesnar get his revenge, take the title, and then go on to be the reigning defending Universal Champion. That's it. I, I think Goldberg is overstayed as welcome. I am not impressed by Goldberg. I am not excited to see Goldberg. I am not intrigued by this storyline. I honestly want it to all end. And that's how I feel. I feel no different than I did before the Survivor Series. I wanted it to end at the Survivor Series. And now here we are, the, you know, coming up in the middle of April, uh, the middle of March, rather, going into April at WrestleMania. Uh, and I just don't care. I just do not care. I want it to be over. It was fine the way it was. The build is fine. I I'm just thinking that Goldberg is overstayed as welcome. That was it. We had uh, Enzo and Cass come out and do some mic work before the match be, uh, you know, between them and Cesaro and Sheamus. Enzo said that they did not come to Chi-Town looking for pity. He said that they came looking for championship gold. Cass listed then every year Michael Jordan won the NBA title. The crowd chanted, how you doing? After each year. And then they did their spiel. So, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows versus Enzo. Amore and Big Cass, Raw Tag Team Championship match. I am sorry, I mentioned that it was supposed to be Sheamus and Cesaro versus Enzo and Cass. That's actually taking place next week. That was actually discussed after what we hear, what we seen here. Gallows and Anderson win by DQ. They retain the Tag Team Championships because Cesaro and Sheamus interfere. Looks like we might get some type of triple threat match between all three teams and some Tag Team division we got on Monday Night Raw. This is all you got. These are all the active teams, ladies and gentlemen, on Monday Night Raw. That's it. So what we got next week is the fact that Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows are your tag team champions. They have nobody else to defend against besides the two, these two teams. So Mick Foley, after what we've seen here, after the blatant disqualification due to outside interference from Sheamus and Cesaro, Enzo and Cass will now go two-on-two -two with Sheamus and Cesaro next week. The winner of that will fight Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows at WrestleMania for the Tag Team Championships. Again, I don't care. It's tough to get invested in this when there's no animosity at all between any of these teams. What are they fighting over? The Tag Team titles are meaningless. There's no intensity in anything that these guys do. It's just there. It's just there to take up 10 to 15 minutes at WrestleMania, and that is it. And I see it, I know it, and I just don't care about anything that's going on with the Tag Team Championships. The division is pathetic. Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy cannot come soon enough. We got, uh, what else we got here? Uh, Akira Tozawa versus Arya Davari. Tozawa wins in two minutes with his snap German suplex. Not much here. Brian Kendrick comes out, faces him. Uh, and, well, Tozawa wants Brian Kendrick to face him. He had a mouth guard in when he speaks. I'm very surprised by Akira Tozawa's English, man. He sounds very good, very coherent. Uh, I didn't think that when I first seen him. I thought he was, you know, one of those non-English speaking superstars. But he's got very, very good uh, speaking skills. So, uh, Brian Kendrick comes out. He said he cannot make any promises, but he'll have an answer for him tomorrow at 2.05 Live. Be careful what you wish for. The New Day, Big E and Kofi Kingston with Xavier Woods versus uh, the fucking real estate agents, the Shining Stars. Who cares? They went over again with their fucking ice cream. New Day wins in one minute. Again, why is this on my television during WrestleMania season? It is not needed. I only want to see things that are going to build towards WrestleMania. This has no fucking... This has no... Nothing to do with WrestleMania. There's no business being on my television. Plain and simple. We come to hour three. We come to hour three. We're in the middle of the ring with Mick Foley... Bailey said it's 24 hours later. She wishes she could call herself a champion tonight. She said she specifically asked Charlotte to leave Dana Brooke in the back so that they can find out who really is the best. She said everyone saw what happened with Sasha. Sasha got emotional. And she said she's trying to wrap up her, you know, wrap her brain around all of this. She said that she has to move forward and look ahead. And she pointed at WrestleMania. She wants to know what is going on with WrestleMania. 
Mick Foley asked Bailey, who is she going to be fighting at WrestleMania? Sasha said, listen, you know, let's do it. Growing up, she said she didn't start in January uh, and end in December. Bailey said that her season started when WrestleMania started and when WrestleMania ended, you know, the following year. So that's what Bailey said. Sasha and Bailey teased fighting at WrestleMania. Sasha said that Mick brought up a great question. She has the answer. She said, just because Dana was in the locker room doesn't mean that she wasn't, you know, that she wasn't going to interfere in the match. She, you know, Dana wasn't going to stay in the locker room. So he suggested that they wrestle at WrestleMania. Bailey smiled. Foley said it sounded like a good match, but he wanted a second opinion from the fans in Chicago. So Foley's out there, and Stephanie's probably fucking got steam coming out of her ears at this point, asking the fucking crowd, what do you think the match should be at WrestleMania? Stephanie McMahon comes out, and this was the absolute most hilarious portion of the show. Stephanie McMahon comes out, her music plays, she gets up the fucking steps, before she even touches the ring steps, people are chanting CM Punk. She opens her fucking mouth and the crowd gets louder and louder and louder with the CM Punk chants. I fucking laughed my ass off, man. I love Chicago. It was fucking awesome. She said that Chicago is very predictable. She said they're all just C- that the, the Chicago is just like CM Punk. You are all losers. And you always cheer for the wrong person, just like Sasha Banks. Uh, I thought Stephanie was going to have a uh, a better quick-witted response to the CM Punk chants. Uh, I don't think she stood in front of the mirror all day long reciting her lines. That was pretty much quick and painless there by Stephanie McMahon. Everybody's a loser for chanting CM Punk. Okay, Stephanie. Monday Night Raw and everybody who works on Monday Night Raw, just like they did last week, like just like the show you put on last week, you guys aren't losers, right? Kevin Dunn's not a fucking loser. Your father's not a loser, right? Come on, bro. Anyway, Chicago always cheering for the wrong person, just like Sasha Banks. Steph said Sasha is the most manipulative person in the locker room so that she can get her hands on the women's championship at WrestleMania. Everybody's turning this on Sasha as Sasha is manipulating Bailey, and she's not really Bailey's friend. So then uh, Stephanie power talked her way through all of this and said, Foley, you know, you. Always come up with some fucking pea-brained idea, but always behind something. There's a gem, you know? There's there's always a gem with you. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to switch it around. She said that Sasha Banks could be in WrestleMania if she defeats Bayley tonight. And if she does, she will get Bayley and Charlotte at WrestleMania for the Women's Championship. Now, I pose the question on Twitter, what is this going to mean for for Nia Jax? Is Nia Jax going to be at WrestleMania? Is she going to be involved in the Women's Championship match? Are they going to add her to a later date? I mean, after tonight, we only got three weeks left to go on Monday Night Raw. So it looks like Nia Jax, as of right now, unless things change, Nia Jax is not going to be positioned in the Women's Championship. Now, I I don't have a problem with this either way. I don't think Nia Jax deserves a championship match. I thought they were just simply putting Nia Jax in there because... They really don't have anybody else, and they didn't want to leave anybody out, being that the division is so, is so shorthanded. But Nia Jax didn't do anything all year to deserve a championship match. Well, because she's on the active roster doesn't mean she deserves to be in a championship match at WrestleMania. She didn't do anything to warrant the championship match. And she lost to Sasha Banks last night, so why would she even be in title consideration? So I'm thinking those things, but then again, I'm thinking, you know, the division is only four women deep. You're going to put three of your best females in the match to showcase at WrestleMania, why not include Nia Jax? So we really don't know what's going on with Nia, but if Sasha beats Bayley tonight, it becomes a triple threat. If Sasha loses, it's Bayley versus Charlotte at WrestleMania. So that was pretty much what Stephanie said. She says it's not taking place next week. It's not taking place two weeks from now. It's taking place tonight. So Sasha has to win tonight. And they did have the match. And it went 11 minutes. And I want to explain this to, to you guys, and I hope you've seen this as well. Because i seen it with fucking even tired eyes right now. I'm exhausted and I've seen this. Sasha and Bailey, after they put on a fucking showcase at Brooklyn two years ago, and what was, in my honest opinion, the greatest women's match I have ever seen. How can you look back at what those two women did in NXT and look at them now two years later on the main roster, and tell me that they are better now than when they were then. 
You can't. This match felt so unimportant. Like who who like who really gave a shit if Sasha Banks won here? She ended up beating and made Bailey tap, and it felt like it was the most unimportant fucking thing on this entire show. There was no intensity. They moved like they were in fucking quicksand. I thought I was watching two Eva Marie's in the fucking ring. This match had absolutely zero emotion behind it. If it has zero emotion behind it, and what those women are showcasing in that ring tonight have absolutely no in intensity or emotion, how am I going to be emotionally invested in what they're trying to do going to WrestleMania? It had absolutely nothing going for it. It's like a fucking car that's stalled on the highway that's got no fucking gas. And all you see is fucking puff, 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 puff coming out of the exhaust. You, it, it's fucking ridiculous. How can you be excited about what the women are doing on Monday Night Raw if they are not feeling it themselves? And that's exactly what i seen tonight. i seen and felt, watching this from my couch, zero emotion. And I don't understand what's going on here. And I hope you guys realize that and seen that in this match tonight. There's no way anybody can tell me what these two women did in Brooklyn two years ago is on par with what they're doing now. You can tell the difference instantly from NXT and the main roster. These women are so over-fucking-produced. These women are fucking tied down to the point where they did not even want to wrestle because they know what they did in Brooklyn two years ago is never going to be accomplished on the main roster. That is just a defeated fucking attitude. I seen two defeated attitudes in that ring tonight. Absolutely zero emotion going into WrestleMania. And as a result... I have zero emotion going into WrestleMania watching anything regarding the Raw Women's Division. This is your revolution? This ain't no fucking revolution. All I see is fucking defeated attitudes with zero emotion. And I hope you guys seen the same thing. Terrible, terrible, terrible fucking display from both Sasha and Bayley tonight. Anyway, moving on here, we had um, Triple H... He had a, a, a backstage segment. They interviewed him on the Titans run. And he was via satellite, but he was probably fucking right in gorilla position doing this fucking interview. He, asked, he uh, Michael Cole asked him for his reactions to the training video that we've seen Seth Rollins. You know, that you know he's going through rehab. We've seen the exclusive backstage, you know, glimpse of Seth Rollins rehabbing. He'll be at WrestleMania. Mark my words, he'll be at WrestleMania. Rollins is not going to go into WrestleMania not being there. He will be there. Whether he's wrestling or not, he will be there. He's not missing WrestleMania. Triple H says that, you know, he took his hat off to the WWE because they're world-class and they have world-class care, care. They provide their athletes, you know, with the best fucking care, second to none. He put over Kevin Wilk, the trainer. He said WWE spares no expense when it comes to the welfare of their talent. He said they just have to hope Seth listens to the experts and what they're telling him and utilizes that advice. He said last week when Seth said he'll be at WrestleMania no matter what, he took it as ignorance. He said it's stupidity. He said Seth lies to himself all the time. Triple H said that he didn't pick nicknames for himself. He claimed people, you know, called him the Cerebral Assassin, the Game, the King of Kings, because it was obvious. It was true. He said Seth calls himself the Man because nobody else will call him that because it's the furthest thing from the truth, you know? Maybe I should call, start calling myself the, you know, the, the man. But I'm not the man. I'm just some fucking bum on here, you know, reviewing WWE videos. You guys think I'm something special. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I love what I'm doing, but, you know, there's more work to be done. I'm not, I'm not at that level yet. You know, I'm not uh, anybody in the YWC yet. I, I wish I was a cerebral assassin. I wish I was the game. I wish I was the fucking king of kings. Uh, right now, I'm in, uh, I'm in Seth Rollins territory, to be perfectly honest with you. That's just the way I feel. But you guys might think differently. I don't know. He said he thinks he can turn that lie into truth because WrestleMania is where dreams come true. He warns Seth that if he shows up at WrestleMania, it will be the last thing that he does. Pretty much, you know, a reiteration of what he said last week when he was in the ring in Green Bay with Corey Graves to no reaction. Triple H said the same exact thing. Come to WrestleMania. It will be the last thing you do in a WWE ring. Seth Rollins will be at WrestleMania, okay? That was pretty much it. It's the typical WWE narrative. They're just biding time for the next three weeks until we see what Seth Rollins really does when he shows up 
at WrestleMania. Um, moving on here, Samoa Joe versus Chris Jericho. This barely did anything, man. I expected a lot more out of this. Three minutes. This was a count out, which went into Samoa Joe's favor. It was uh, a count out. Joe wins. Joe sidestepped um, a slide kick. He applied the coquina clutch at ringside. He dropped down as the referee began his count. He let go, rolled into the ring, beat the 10 count. So that was pretty much it. There, there was absolutely nothing about this match that you guys got to go out and rewatch. I expected a lot more. I, you know, some people that I was talking to, you know, about Monday Night Raw, they were excited to see this match. They, they, they stood up instead of going to sleep because they wanted to see Samoa Joe versus Chris Jericho. And we didn't get that. We got three minutes of a, a Samoa Joe countout victory. You know, bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Did absolutely nothing for anybody. It was a waste of time for Joe, Jericho, and everybody watching. The end of the show, man. You know, there really wasn't anything to what we've seen to close the show. There, there really is nothing to, to go over here. Nothing about the end of the show. Nothing about how Monday Night Raw ended really um, is going to get people talking. It's not going to get people talking because we expected it. We kind of anticipated it. We're just waiting for it to happen. And it happened. And when it happened, it's like, okay, that was it. Now we got three weeks to build. How are they going to get us to WrestleMania? What's going to be the underlying story here? Why is The Undertaker out to challenge Roman Reigns? And why does Roman Reigns disrespect The Undertaker? What's going on there? What's the story that they're going to be building around? It's got to be more than just Roman Reigns eliminating The Undertaker from the Royal Rumble. There's got to be a more underlying story there. We don't know what it is, but... The foundation for it was laid out. Braun Strowman comes out. He wants to tear Roman limb from limb because of what happened last night. I don't want to go over why Roman Reigns should have lost last night, but Roman Reigns should have lost last night. Braun Strowman should have at least looked good coming out of that match. It should have been a disqualification. Okay? Braun Strowman wants to tear Roman Reigns limb from limb. Okay? Nobody likes Roman Reigns. Chicago doesn't like you. Neither do I. Fans cheered. Fans booed. Fans were all over the place. CM Punk, you know. Roman Reigns comes out, boo. Braun Strowman's getting cheered. It's all fucked up. It's all fucked up. Roman Reigns' music hits, boos. But then all of a sudden, The Undertaker's music hits. Cheers. Undertaker's bell goes off. Taker comes down to the ring. He walks up to Braun Strowman, stares at Braun Strowman. A holy shit chant breaks out. There was an underlying CM Punk chant in there somewhere. Braun backs away. He leaves the ring slowly and retreats through the crowd. We don't see Braun Strowman again. But as Braun is walking away, he's staring down The Undertaker in the ring. He walked away on his own accord. The Undertaker didn't scare him away. He just backed away. Because The Undertaker was there for a reason. Braun didn't know why, but Braun was simply showing respect to The Undertaker. Okay, he left through the crowd. Roman Reigns' music hits again for a second time. Roman sucks. Boo's all over the place. Roman says that Braun wasn't calling you out, dead man. He was calling me out. So with all due respect, this is my yard now. Roman Reigns does that, you know. He, he got that fucking uh, cocky look on him. You know, that pretty boy look, you know, where, where he does the fucking duck lips. You know? That's all Roman did tonight. Roman sucks being chanted through the crowd. And they both looked up at the WrestleMania sign. Oh, my God. Everybody points to the WrestleMania sign to close the fucking show after the pay-per-view, right? All of a sudden, Taker chokeslams Roman Reigns, crowd cheered, Taker fixed his jacket, and Michael Cole said, this is what WrestleMania season is all about. The original big dog is back to reclaim his yard. Undertaker never lost the yard. How is Roman Reigns the big dog when The Undertaker never lost his yard? What did The Undertaker do to lose his yard? I don't understand how that was even uttered from Michael Cole's mouth. What did The Undertaker do to lose his yard? It's always been his yard. No matter if he lost the streak or not, it's still his yard. No matter if he loses to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, it is still his yard. No matter if he is fucking retired, it will still be The Undertaker's yard. That was it. That's all we've seen. We don't know why. We don't know why these guys are fighting. We don't know why this match is being booked. There's got to be more to what's going on here. What is it with Braun Strowman? Is Braun Strowman going to have a major role at WrestleMania? 
Is his staring down The Undertaker uh, a precursor to what's to come later in the year? Maybe we see Braun Strowman versus The Undertaker. I don't know. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not excited about Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker. I'm not. I don't see that being a marquee match at WrestleMania at all. I don't give a shit who Roman Reigns is to anybody in the WWE current day. I don't. I don't think that's a marquee WrestleMania match at all. And I just have this sick feeling in my stomach. If WWE was quick to book Braun Strowman the way they did at Fastlane last night, what do you think they're going to do for The Undertaker at WrestleMania with Roman Reigns? Nobody is safe from Roman Reigns. I told you, this is Roman's yard, right? Raw, Roman always wins. No matter if he has a few weeks where he's being beat up or, you know, the show goes off the air with Roman and his back laying, you know, on the mat with him looking up at the lights. It doesn't matter. In the end, Roman always wins. I am not excited about this match. I don't care about this match. I think the WWE is really fucking themselves here. They book themselves in a corner as, as always. There's no way out of this. Roman's career will be over if we see the ending that I know the WWE is going to give us at WrestleMania. There will be no coming back from what is about to happen at WrestleMania. This is it. You got three weeks to make me believe in this match. You got three weeks to really make this feel special. Will WWE do it? No. All the other years when The Undertaker came back for WrestleMania, I was excited. This year, I don't care. The Undertaker's match at WrestleMania 33 is just another match with Roman Reigns. I wish it would have been Finn Balor, but this year, it's just another match. And that's your Monday Night Raw review. Thank you guys so much. I'm exhausted. If I looked a little bit out of it, on this review. I promise I'll be back tomorrow for SmackDown. I'll be back to my normal self. I am really exhausted, guys. Thank you for sticking with me. If you enjoyed the video, let me know with a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about everything that happened on Monday Night Raw. The groundwork is set for Raw going into WrestleMania. It was a very newsworthy show, and they pretty much did what they had to do, man. It was a decent episode of Monday Night Raw. It wasn't good. It wasn't bad. But WWE, with four weeks left to go, they set the groundwork for WrestleMania, and now we can begin and hopefully become intrigued with what WWE has presented us on Monday Night Raw. I'm JD. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for SmackDown Live. I'll talk to you later.